where we're about to get our wings. This is a great launch pad with those Red Bull wings as these riders are all poised and ready to wait for this next race to get underway here as they all turn their attention up toward that first turn region as they're watching the start man waiting for the start sequence to get underway. As you can see that start sequence has not started just yet. They've still got a couple moments before they must be prepared, but they're all itching and ready to go racing here, as you can tell. Oh. Well, the card man sends that thing sideways after uh, it goes to the one, and we go racing here and back into moto racing as the 450B class looking for our whole shot award winner there from Bell Helmets. And as we check up front, the 42 machine of Austin Wadling out of Canada on the Honda of Canada GDR machine, getting off to a strong start out here, it looks like. And if you look at Moto One results for that riding, he took a 15th place position, so a grand start here in the second moto. And just while we talked about through those first motos and uh, alluded to is exactly this same type of situation where riders maybe not getting the best of starts that first moto due to gate choices and things of that nature. Well, this time around, about uh, 15th gate choice seemed to work out in the favor of this number 42 ride as he leads the way and begins to open up quite a bit of a, a gap over that second, third, and fourth place positions. By the way, Watling getting the whole shot, but we see the 44 machine now in that number two spot. That is Brock Pappy. Pappy took a third place position in moto number one. He's got company coming in by the way of it looks like that 37 machine. Or was it the 31? We'll double check that as they get out here in the big sweeper turn now. 44, actually 33 machine. So we were way, I was way off on that one. That 33 is Perry Warren. Perry Warren, another rider finishing outside the top 10. He took a 13th of moto number one. So we're starting to see uh, some of those uh, outside the top 10 riders get good starts here. We'll see where the front runners are starting out here in moto number two. And we're about to set the stage for a great second moto, it looks like. Watling out front, Pampy in second, Perry Warren in third, Gray Tate, the number 14, he is fourth place. Ricky Ren Renandella running at the number five spot, Marco Canella is sixth, Hunter Slosser in seventh, Ezra Hastings is eighth, Steve Col Colony is running at the number nine spot, then Tommy Max, he rounds out the top 10 as we look at 11 through 20, Hayden Humphrey in 11th, Matteo Johnson in the number 12 spot. We got Carson Brown 13th, Ryan Blanford 14th, Sean Fromlet is in 15th, Dalton Leslie in 16th, Gavin Chen 17th, Chris Vendetti 18th, Devin Stang in 19th, and Austin Kozad rounds out your top 20. Carter Halpain involved in a first turn crash there, crosses the finish line strap at the end of lap number one in 39th place position. He has two riders behind him, the 24 of Brian Begin and the 23 of Ty Casey, and I believe maybe also that uh, 42nd place ride to 59 of Riley Ogrognik, who as well suffered from some issues here on lap number one. So your Moto One winner has got a long road to hoe. And when you start adding up the seconds right now, the saving grace for this is the fact that a lot of these riders were a half second or just a few tenths of a second apart as they went by. If he can get to work here on lap number two, we might be able to see how Payne start working his way back up through the pack. Yeah, you're right. That is a very tall order. I was watching the first turn when uh, Hal Payne collected with a few other riders. He dusted himself off there and uh, going to get moving. The race now tightening up. Watling and Brock Pappy on the number 44 Suzuki. Here goes Pappy. Side by side, you got to watch out on that jump. You will spring to the left and right if you're side by side with somebody. Hey, there's the hat for Wes. Get him up here. Give him his hat. So we're watching Watley and Pappy as Pappy has made the pass right in front of the mechanics area. 
His dad wrote down and said, pass him. He goes, all right, I'm going to do it right here. And he passed him right there. <laughs> well, Pappy right now sitting in position to take that national championship as he is one of the strongest running right now in the 450B class top three from moto number one. Pappy did take third on that American Suzuki. As we take a look at Watling, again, he was 15th place. Perry Warren was 13th place. Uh, Ricky Ranandawa, the uh, number 88 machine, that rider, actually uh, finished up in an eighth place position so he's running uh, a lot stronger than he was in that uh, first moto so he's looking pretty strong in this second moto as far as overall scores is concerned marco canella rounding out the top five the 46 machine he took fourth place position so that's how spread out we are as far as those top riders from moto one to moto two through those top five hey guys carter halpain he was the guy to beat in that first one we saw him go down hard jumping into that sand, and then I'm just turn crash. going down in the first turn. Do you think he can turn his luck around, Kevin? I don't know, man. That's two back-to-back -back motos with big crashes, and obviously this one was not his fault. So uh, Carter Halpain having to salvage now. He's passed about nine riders in this first lap, so it's easy to pass him on those first few laps. Everybody's kind of bunched up. Maybe the talent's not as deep as there. When you get inside that top ten, you're not just going to pick them off quite as quick. Carter's got a lot of work to do, and tell you a guy that did himself as a favor is the number 44 Brock Pappy he was third in the first photo now he is leading well looking at the fastest lap time Brock Pappy has a 158.9 in traffic right now in 33rd place position as he wrapped that up Carter Halpain popped off a 159.3 that's less than a half second off the pace that your leader is with a free and clear racetrack until now there's a 157.9 Pappy dropped it another full second there. We'll see whether or not uh, Carter Halpin and came. Not only dropped it a full second, but went to the lead. I like it when you call me Brock Poppy, taking the moto lead here in number two, in the second moto of 450B. And guys, he was third in moto number one. A 3 1, looking pretty. Looking good for a national championship title here for Pappy and the, and the American Suzuki for sure. The second moto. Make an interesting third moto, I would have to think. Rolling through this second and now third lap of racing. Way through our uh, top 20 and uh, looking for where Carter Halpain up the 24th place position. Now he slowed his pace down to a 201 lap time that time. But man, when you look at the amount of riders that he went through during that lap of racing, then uh, you know he had his work cut out for him. But after three, Hal Payne is now up to the 24th place position. Pappy still out front. Watling, Canella, Warren, Rannan, Randanella, I believe is how you would say that. I have no clue, though. Kevin, we were talking about Carson Brown and those ripping 125 videos through the snow up in Washington. And now he was second in moto number one. He's back. He's, he, I think that's, isn't that 10th place? Yeah, so Carson Brown up to 10th place with Brown being down, down, Brown being down, Brown being down 10th place after finishing second in Moto 1, Halpain back in the 24th spot after winning this one. Brock Poppy's really looking good, yeah. Kevin. Yeah, he's looking good. So is Austin Watling. Marco Canella, those three kids kind of stay. If you, this is one of those races you stay top five, you give yourself a pretty good chance to win this thing, especially if you throw a Moto win in there. And here they come again just past us. We're watching Austin Watling on the 42 Honda as he hops over the Tunnel of Love. He's loving that position right there in the number two spot. Ray Butt still holding solid on the face of that jump, though. Have not been able to resurface that. Can't run the loader up anymore. He was saying it hurt a little bit last night. Hurt yeah. the ribs a little bit. I mean, that's a 50,000-pound machine that I you're running them, over the top of Ray Butt. the medical tent. They were doing all sorts of foam stem, right, right. Muscle, muscle stimulators. He they raises were, up at the end of the day, and all the dirt shakes it all they off. They were injecting something into him. I hope we don't have a, a performance-enhanced track out there with Ray Butts, but he had to do what he had to do to get back in the track. I like to think they're going to do it by the book here at MX Sports. So I'm going to say he's clean as a whistle. Raymond Butts, your Rocky Mountain ATV MC main guy. He's about six foot 47 with the Afro. We lay him down in the morning, push some dirt overneath him, and we actually make a jump out of Raymond Butts. So to catch you up to speed, that's what you're looking at. So remember, guys, Ray Butts is not on the track. He is in the track. He's a living, breathing thing. But Brock Poppy still out front in this one. Give you a top five rundown. It's Austin waiting, waiting for Poppy to make a mistake. But Austin waiting is going to have to make it happen if he wants to try to win. Number three spots be Marco Canella or Perry Warren. And the fifth place spot, rounding out your top five, is Hunter Slosser. 
Well, you know, taking a look at this right now, I mean, how often do you look at a 4-3 as uh, contention for the national championship for at least a top three overall? Well, the 4-3, you can look at top three, but man, right now, I mean, he would have a pretty good lead in that position if he was to, uh, he'd be second behind Holy Brock Pappy. Look so at Carter Halpain. He is yeah. in 17th place, guys. Wow. Now he went from, what was that, 39th place 39th. to 24th place to 17th place over the course of the last three laps. He's hustling, man. He's trying to put himself back on the map here. I mean, if you have another crazy moto in that third and final moto, if he can get up somehow into the top five or so, he could be right back in this thing. Just showing some heart no matter what. Hey, you got to keep pushing till the end. You never know what's going to happen. Just as soon as we watch Carter Halpain moving into that 17th spot, Carson Brown moving up to the eighth spot as well. So that was your one and two in the moto number one, trying to move their way up towards the leaderboard and try to keep themselves in championship contention. But Austin Watling, I said that wrong earlier, I was calling it waiting. Thanks for not calling me out, guys. It made me feel a little bit better about myself. I'll try to help you out. Have somebody hit me up, goes, hey man, it's Enzo Lopes, not Lopez. I'm like, I know what it is, man. I'll tell Jimmy though. Yeah. Well, I'm probably did the I one say, that's I the victim. Lopez, I, I say Lopez yeah. all the time. It's Lopes. <laughs> what is it, L O P? -E and I know that. Z. Okay, yeah. Lopes. And I know that, and you, I still do. You get something it. in your head, you're like, you just, you just go with it. I do the same thing. All right, Carter Halpain now up to, to 13th as he's creeping towards that top 10. This is where the passes are really going to be critical. Coming across the mechanics area, that's where Halpain is. He's got two riders directly in front of him, so he's got a shot. There he is. Hey, great job. The camera guy's getting right on it. There is the number 17 of Carter Halpain. Makes the pass now up to the number 12 spot. Yeah, he is rolling right now down there at a 159.8. Only guy out on the track at sub two minute lap time. And that's not running his favorite race line. That's passing guys, yeah. having to work through guys. That's impressive. That is not running any of the lines that he wants. He has gone through basically, what he's a, probably all the way up to, probably all the way up to around 11th place now on the board showing 13. So he's already been through about 30 riders. That's impressive. That is very impressive. I don't think that impressive's an impressive a word, no. enough word to use to say that either. Awesome, stellar, killer, rad, epic. I epic. really like Halpain on the 450 though, compared to the 250. Um, just like Justin Cooper, I think Justin Cooper rides that 450 just phenomenal. Both of them great riders on the 250 as well, but watch them ride this wow. 450 class. It's just a treat. These guys, young kids, just ripping it up on the biggest bikes. Well, Halpain ripping through another there, it looks like, as he moves up at yet another position. This should be putting him close, if not into the top ten, as we wrap up lap number six. We see Pappy, Canelo, Watling, Slosser, Hayden Humphrey already through. Now where is that going to put the number 17 machine when he comes through at the end of this lap? So we're having a look at your uh, first moto winner, the number 17, Carter Halpain. He goes down on the first turn, and he has just put his head down, and he has been charging. We'll check back in with timing and scoring when he crosses the stripe. And there it is. That's lap number six for Carter Halpain. Up to 10th. Awesome. Great work. Way to salvage. Like Wes Kane says, you got to be a junk man. When stuff goes wrong, you got to scoop up all the garbage, the trash, make something out of it. He's the new JYD on the circuit, junkyard dog trying to work his way through the pack. And he's doing a great job of it right now. Still running a two minute lap time, even though he was passing all sorts of guys trying to get out. He was getting outside of the main line that he wants to be in. But Carson Brown moving his way up the ladder as well in the number six spot. So Carson Brown still fighting to try to stay in this championship as well. As we have a look at our leader on that Barks Racing Suzuki, the upstart amateur team, getting a lot of help from Suzuki. Got the full factory ride Suzuki trailer out there. They got uh, Larry Brooks as the team manager, so they went all in on this team, and they got Brock Pappy. Looks like they picked a pretty good candidate for the team. You know Chris Wheeler down there at Suzuki is just completely stoked right now, having Brock Pappy out there doing work on that 450. And guess what, guys? Suzuki's got a brand new 450 coming out next year. They're racing it in Europe right now in the World Championship. Guys like Jasakonis are riding it right now and doing really well on it. And we are excited to see that new 450 in Pro Motocross next year. And I bet you Brock Poppy is as well, because he is already looking really good on the 2017. Imagine what he's going to be like on that brand new 2018 Suzuki.
Well, it's going to be exciting to see it all unleashed and unveiled here in the USA, of course. Right now, Suzuki rider Brock Pappy is in that number one spot. Canella in the number two spot. Watling is still holding on the third. Slosser still fourth. Carson Brown around Hayden Humphrey now as he'll take over the number five spot aboard the 91. Humphrey is now in the number six position. Ricky Randanella is checking in on the number seven spot. Perry Warren is eighth. Tommy Maxey, I believe, will be the ninth place ride. And then we should be seeing Carter Halpain come back through in that position. One thing to point out, Halpain breaking into the uh, top ten. He had a 12-second gap up to the ninth place position. Guess what? He somehow or another made it. Tommy Maxey is had some sort of an issue as he's dropped all the way back as far as 13th place. That gives Carter Halpain the uh, ninth place position. Now a 10 second gap up to Perry Warren, the 33 for an eighth place spot as we'll continue to watch his progression and watch Brock Pappy take it to the rest of the field here in this 450 B class on Racer TV. Lap seven in the history books. We're working on lap number eight. How many laps will these riders go? Still a ways away from seeing that two lap board out. We're only 14 15 minutes into this race, working on 15 minutes. So we still got another five or so before we expect to see checkers. So that should translate into possibly about three more laps, Jimmy. Yeah, I'd say, judging by the clock, yeah, about three more laps. These guys usually run around 10 laps. Right now, he's getting ready to start or to finish off his seventh lap. So it'll be lap eight. Three more to go then for Brock Poppy, and he has a nice cozy lead out front, 12 seconds. That is a lot of distance. So Brock Poppy having a great moto. It's crazy to watch. Two lap card is out. Yeah, that one must have just came out. So we got the two lap gore coming out, or is out as uh, Pappy and Canella goes by. 15 seconds between first and second. I do want to point out Tommy Maxey did not make it around for the uh, seventh lap complete. He has dropped back as far as the 33rd position. He finished seventh in Moto 1. So that takes another player that finished top 10 in Moto 1 out of the game right now. And that really jumbles up the situation and opens, I, I think, the window of opportunity for other riders to, to really surprise us whenever the final scores have been tallied. Yes, for sure. A lot of surprising stuff going on here. Oh, but Carson Brown is moving down the leaderboard. He must have had an issue. Yes, we're seeing it on the side of the track right now. The Monster Energy Kawasaki rider, Carson Brown, pushing his bike off the track. That's bone ba Bones backing down there. Wow. He is the suspension tech for the actually the factory Monster Energy Pro Circuit team, helping Brown off the track. But what a heartbreak for Brown. He had rode so well, was already up into the top five after a disastrous first lap. Yeah, he uh, actually finished second in Moto One as well, and he was positioning himself strongly for Moto Number Three in the championship itself, depending on what took place out there in, in this upcoming third moto. So that there's Halpain. another of our top ten out of the running now. That's going to bump Halpain up a spot, though. So Halpain right now in seventh place, and the next two guys in front of him. He's got a four-second gap up to Perry Warren. And then he's got a seven second gap to get the next guy who's running fifth. And that's that's Richie Ronaldo or Randy Randinella. Well, the big wall might come whenever he reaches that sixth place position. Ricky Randinella is uh, about 16 seconds ahead of Perry Warren right now. But what a ride there. White flag is out. He's got one more lap to get things done in. But Brock Pappy is taking care of business as ordered up there from the friends at uh, the RM Army out there as uh, Suzuki makes their way around and uh, looking for a national championship in this 450 B class. Nine laps down, Pappy Canella now in the number two spot. Watling should be checking in in any moment in that three spot. Hey, Rodney, just uh, watch Carson Brown getting pushed off the uh, track. Looks like he might have gotten injured. So that's one of your top ten guys. He just wheeled the bike off the track, and uh, he was kind of – Looking a little bit rough. I also saw Tommy Maxey. Tommy Maxey, another kid, top 10, ran out of gas. So two of your top 10 guys having some unfortunate issues out there on the racetrack. Yeah, Kevin, uh, we uh, we saw that just a few moments ago. I know that we saw Tommy Maxey. He was up in about a sixth place position, and he had dropped all the way back down to, well, now 40th place position. And Carson Brown, after that little uh, 
mishap the, the the problem that he's suffering from there looks like some mechanical issue the 91 machine has dropped back as far as 35th place right now so some real heartbreakers like you mentioned for that top 10 and that opens the door wide up but uh, i don't know whether well pappy right now doesn't really seem to concern well it kind of concerns him a little bit because the less people he has to fight with for points and those lower points for that championship the better off he's going to be looking heading into moto three and a little bit more comfort room Halpain is up to the number six spot now after nine laps and heading into this 10th and final lap. And looking at this, he might be able to take on a fifth place position out of Ricky Randanella. We'll see if that happens or not. But right now, through the Thor sweep, uh, sweeper turn, comes your Moto 2 winner. A three and a one will set him in charge of the situation rolling into Moto number three. Chris Wheeler up in the RM Army Tower. They're in the middle of track. He's saying, I like it when you win Brock Pappy. He is going to be going to the podium. But Halpain, that's the story, Rodney. How far is he going to make it up on this last lap? I like that Racer TV, they know they're going straight to Halpain and seeing how far he's made it up. Has he caught Ricky yet for that number five spot? Well, we see him making his way around here. And I have to say, a great ride for Brock Pappy, the uh, ride of the uh, season so far for him here in 2017. But, man, the, the display of uh, just speed and pure of lettuce and hunger by this number 17 of Carter Halpain, 39th position as he wrapped up that first lap of racing, and he'll find himself now into a fifth place position as the checker flag flies. Carter Halpain, top five, so a one and a five. Man, talk about a big salvage there. Talking about the uh, uh, being a junk man, that's exactly what Carter Halpain was in that one. 39th all the way up to fifth by the time the checkers fly, but our top three, gold, silver, and bronze going to Bronk Pappy, Marco Canella, and Austin Watling as we head down to the podium with Kevin Kelly. Our Race Tech podium presentation is going to be getting underway here in just a moment. While they get that sorted out, we're going to go ahead and give you the rest of the running. Perry Warren in, Warren in seventh, Sean Promlet is eighth, Dalton Leslie in ninth, Matty O. Johnson in tenth, Chris Vendetti, uh, crossover GNCC MXer guy in the 11th place position. Zach Redding is 12th. Austin Kozad, son of Kevin Kozad from MXers for Jesus in 13th. Stephen Colony is 14th. Trey Fager in 15th. Ryan Martin, 16th. Preston Taylor, 17th. Dustin McManus, 18th. Gavin Chin, uh, 19th. And Hayden Humphrey, I believe, will round out your top 10. Now we head down with Kevin Kelly to the Race Tech podium. You got it. Thanks a lot, Rodney. Well, let's hear it for our winner, the number 44 of Brock Pappy. Nice work here. The first big win for the big new team here. Take me through it, man. What does it mean to the team and to you? Oh, it's great. You know, they've been working their butts off. The Barx guys over there, Nate Barberry, Big Papa, Myron, Larry, they've been putting in work to get here. And, uh, you know, the bikes are running really good this week. And I just got off to, I think it was second for a lap or two, got in the lead, put in a comfortable lead, and uh, just kind of smoothed it out there. All right, man. So now we got the championship now. It's going to be interesting. Carter got a fifth, so the points are all kind of tight now. Yeah, it's going to be tight. Uh, I don't know what happened to him, but I'm just going to keep my head on straight and not worry about it and uh, try to get a whole shot my next moto and put it on the box for the championship. Let's talk about the folks that helped you out here. I want to thank Bar X for doing an awesome job over there, Chaparral, Suzuki, Fly Monster Army, 100%, FMF, Dunlop, Motul, CD, PR2 for the best suspension out there, EBS for the best knee braces, um, Carb Sport for keeping me hydrated, Mad Mike Jones, uh, Dave Kilgore, Big Papa, 2X Promotions, uh, everybody else. Larry Brooks for being out, standing out there. Blaine for working his butt off for me this week. Mom and Dad, girlfriend, family, friends, everybody, thank you so much. Races himself into a championship position. Folks, let's hear it for the 44. His name is Brock Pappy. Nice job. Let y'all take a couple more photos. Then we'll bring up our second place finisher on the Yamaha. Come on down if you are in the house. We need our second place rider. I believe that's Marco Canella. So Brock Pappy with that moto finish really puts himself in a good spot to win that championship.
First championship for the Bar X Suzuki team. Come on up here, folks. Let's hear it for Marco Canella. Marco, put that around your neck, man. You fought hard for that one. Things kind of got spread out. You just kind of settled in there after you got past uh, Austin Watling. Take me through your race. Yeah, I got up to a really good jump on the start and just kind of got out pulled through the till on my 250. But uh, there was some chaos in the first corner. Some people didn't, went down right in front of me, but I was lucky to uh, tuck in on the inside and come around around fifth or sixth. And then I just tried to push up through the pack as hard as I could. And I got into third. And uh, Austin and Brock were riding really good. And uh, just tried to ride my own race and uh, stay smooth out there. And uh, Austin ended up going down. And I just kind of passed him and rode my own race to the checker flag. How are you looking in the championship? Right now I got a 4-2, so hopefully we can get another good moto and uh, end off on the box this week. All right, man, run down those sponsors. I got to thank uh, my mom and dad. I mean, I wouldn't be here without them. My little brother Logan, Justin, the Crown family, they're all here helping me out so much. Uh, MPA, the whole moto park crew back home. OTS, FF, Yamaha for building me this awesome race bike. Uh, Orthoflex, Fox, MCR, Scott Goggles, keeping my vision clean out there. FMF, Drew Robertson, Rockstar, and uh, Club MX. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate everything you guys have done. And Tamer Whole Shot Devices. Thanks, guys. There it is. Second place finisher. Loud about it for Marco Canella. All right. Next up, we're going to bring up the Whole Shot Award winner and our third place finisher, Mr. Austin Watling. Come on up here, my man. I believe Austin is the Bell Helmets Whole Shot Award winner. There should be a ginormous check. I think that one will spin just the same if we don't have it. There you go. Grab that big check from them. There you go. All right, man. Hold it up. Smile for the camera. He's going to want you to smile. You're going to be on their social media, their MySpace page. All right, dude. Take me through it. A start. You avoided all that chaos that was right there. I don't know if you could feel it coming down on you or what. Oh, definitely. Um, I came out of the start good. I've been feeling good on my 450, but... Uh, First few motos this week weren't going too well. I was struggling with suspension, and then uh, we called my suspension guy, Joe Skid, and made made a few adjustments, and that was way better. Um, still getting some arm pump at the end, but we'll work on that, and uh, yeah, take it from there. Well, awesome job. You earned that in the moto. You got third place. I, something happened there on the last lap or so. Did you go down? Tell me about it. Yeah, I went down over after the uh, Rocky Mountain sand section on the hill, and um, wasn't the best spot to go down if I had to choose, but um, I made it work, and stayed on the box. All right, man, let's thank your sponsors before we roll out of here. My mom and dad for everything. I wouldn't be here without them. Um, WCK Honda, the whole GDR crew. Um, Shift Racing, uh, Fox, um, uh, Yoshimura, um, SSS Suspension, everyone else on the team, thank you so much. How about it for Austin Watling? He is your third place finisher. Congratulations to our entire podium. 450B class is done. Put a fork in it. We'll toss it back up to Rodney, Jason, Jimmy, Wes Kane, Ralph, Jeff Emig, Ricky Carl.